The OCA's Trilateral Security Pact, formalized in September 2021 between Australia, the United Kingdom, and the United States, represents a landmark shift in defense collaboration aimed at countering emerging geopolitical challenges in the Indo-Pacific. At its core is the ambitious SSN AUKUS program, designed to deliver a new generation of conventionally armed nuclear-powered submarines that integrate cutting-edge technology from all three nations. For Australia, this initiative addresses the pressing need to replace its aging fleet of six Collins-class diesel-electric submarines, which are increasingly outmatched by modern threats and lack the endurance to patrol its vast maritime domain. The program not only enhances Australia's naval capabilities, but also strengthens the strategic alignment of AUKUS partners, positioning them to deter aggression in a region marked by rising tensions, particularly with China. The procurement process under AUKUS is structured in two key phases, known as the Optimal Pathway, announced in March 2023. In the short term, Australia will acquire three to five in-service Virginia-class SSNs from the United States, with deliveries scheduled for 2032 and 2035, and an optional two more by 2038, at an estimated cost within the broader $368 billion Australian dollars program budget. These submarines, built by General Dynamics Electric Boat and Huntington Ingalls Industries, will serve as an interim measure to bridge the capability gap as Australia transitions from the Collins-class fleet. Simultaneously, starting in 2027, Submarine Rotational Force West will see up to four U.S. Virginia-class and one U.K. Astute-class rotate through HMAS Stirling in Western Australia, providing Australian crews with critical training and operational experience. In the long term, Australia and the UK will co-develop the SSN AUKUS class, a next-generation design incorporating UK expertise from the Astute class program and US technological support, including nuclear reactors from Rolls-Royce. Construction will occur at Osborne, South Australia, with the first SSN AUKUS submarine entering service in the early 2040s, aiming for a fleet of up to eight boats by the 2050s. This dual-phase approach ensures a phased enhancement of Australia's naval power while fostering a sovereign industrial base, supported by a $262 million Australian dollars investment in January 2025 to integrate Australian firms into allied supply chains. The SSN AUKUS submarines promise a leap in capabilities over existing platforms. Featuring nuclear propulsion, they offer unparalleled stealth, endurance, and range, allowing covert operations across vast distances for months without refueling, far surpassing the Collins class's diesel-electric limitations. Advanced hull designs and anechoic coatings will minimize acoustic signatures, while state-of-the-art combat systems, including artificial intelligence, advanced sonar, and electronic warfare capabilities, will outstrip even the sophisticated astute class systems. Armed with vertical launch systems for Tomahawk cruise missiles, with 1,500 kilometers range, advanced torpedoes, and potentially future hypersonic weapons, these submarines will provide mission flexibility and long-range strike options absent in the Collins class, which relies on Mark 48 torpedoes and Harpoon missiles. For Australia, this translates into a modern, world-class platform capable of intelligence, surveillance, reconnaissance, undersea warfare, and precision strikes enhancing deterrence across the Indo-Pacific. Deployment will initially center on HMAS Stirling, upgraded with eight billion Australian dollars in infrastructure investments, with future operations expanding to strategic choke points and allied missions west of the international dateline. The implications for Australia are multifaceted. Strategically, the SSNs elevate its military posture from a regional to a global player, aligning it closely with U.S. and U.K. interests and bolstering deterrence against China's expanding naval presence, evidenced by recent Chinese warship deployments near Australian shores. Economically, the program will generate 20,000 direct jobs over 30 years, including 4,000 to 5,500 in South Australia, and establish a sustainable submarine industry through investments in skills and infrastructure, such as the Osborne Shipyard. However, 
the $368 billion Australian dollars cost poses significant financial risks, labeled very high risk by the Australian Submarine Agency due to potential U.S. production delays, currently 1.2 to 2 boats per year against a needed 2 plus, and the absence of a contingency plan. Critics argue this diverts resources from other defense priorities, while reliance on U.S. technology raises sovereignty concerns. For the U.K., AUKUS ensures the Royal Navy's seven astute class submarines, due for replacement by the 2040s, are succeeded by SSN AUKUS boats, maintaining its naval edge and Indo-Pacific presence through shared advancements. Regionally, the AUKUS submarines reshape security dynamics. By potentially doubling Allied SSN numbers in the Western Pacific by the 2030s, they strengthen AUKUS deterrence, complicating China's maritime strategy in contested areas like the South China Sea. This comes amid China's own naval buildup, with its Type 093B Shang-class SSNs, six in service, more planned, offering nuclear propulsion and VLS for YJ-18 anti-ship missiles, though their stealth and endurance lag behind Virginia-class and SSN AUKUS designs. Japan, a potential AUKUS collaborator under Pillar 2, operates 22 diesel-electric submarines, including the advanced Soryu and Taige classes with air-independent propulsion, boasting exceptional stealth but lacking the range and speed of nuclear-powered boats. India's Arihant-class nuclear ballistic missile submarines and planned SSN program focus on deterrence rather than attack roles, with only one operational and technological maturity trailing OCA standards. Compared to these competitors, Australia's SSNs offer superior range, firepower, and interoperability, positioning it ahead of regional peers, though China's numerical advantage and rapid production remain formidable. The broader regional impact is double-edged. Enhanced trilateral coordination through joint exercises and intelligence sharing reinforces collective security, potentially deterring aggression. However, it risks escalating tensions, with Indonesia and Malaysia expressing unease over an arms race, and China viewing AUKUS as a direct challenge, possibly accelerating its own military investments. Australia's adherence to non-proliferation standards under the Treaty of Rarotonga mitigates some concerns, but the nuclear propulsion aspect still unsettles Pacific neighbors. Compared to Japan's defensively-oriented fleet, or India's nascent SSN ambitions, Australia's proactive OCA strategy aligns it more closely with US-led containment efforts, amplifying its strategic weight, but straining relations with non-aligned states. In conclusion, Australia's OCA submarine procurement is a transformative endeavor that modernizes its naval capabilities, strengthens alliances, and repositions it as a key Indo-Pacific player. While outpacing regional competitors like Japan and India in range and firepower, it faces challenges in cost, delivery risks, and geopolitical fallout, particularly vis-a-vis -vis China's growing might. For Australia, the program promises deterrence and economic growth, but demands careful management of financial and diplomatic risks. Regionally, it bolsters allied security, yet risks intensifying rivalries underscoring the delicate balance AUKUS must strike to ensure stability in an increasingly contested landscape.